Part 19, Boral Drain and Dry Lath. Drain and Dry Lath is the reinvention of the draining and drying wall system that unifies each critical component into a single high-performance product, one that requires less fasteners and fewer penetrations. Thoughtfully designed with wood-framed sheathed walls in mind, Drain and Dry Lath is also beneficial for metal-framed and masonry wall systems. Boral Drain and Dry Lath offers a system approach to adhered stone and stucco substrate preparation by providing a rain screen and lath in a single layer. It is the ultimate in moisture protection and installation speed. Let's take a look at Boral Drain and Dry Lath. Starting with the dimple sheet material, which provides a 3 8 inch gap to drain incidental water and can also provide ventilation drying when detailed properly. This material is a vapor barrier and provides defense against solar-driven moisture. Moving on to the lath component, drain and dry lath provides a true alkaline-resistant glass fiber lath to virtually eliminate risk of rust corrosion deterioration. To enable a secure attachment, Tighter clusters of fibers are located every six inches, known as nail bands. They provide strength at attachment points and a visual guide for fastener spacing. The glass lath is larger than the dimple sheet to provide the extra material needed for proper lapping. Start your installation with the weep screed starter that is designed to receive the drain and dry lath and bug mesh, channeling any water to a nearby weep hole. The attachment flange meets the 3.5 inch requirement of the building code and is pre-punched with nail slots that allow this PVC material to move when needed. This part is colored to blend in with mortar. The bug mesh 10-foot roll comes with adhesive pre-applied to make installation simple. Just remove the release tape and stick the bug mesh at drainage and ventilation locations. Drain and dry lath is attached with mechanical fasteners. Roofing nails, lath staples, or screws are acceptable. They must be corrosion resistant and able to penetrate wood framing at a minimum of one inch. While not required, lath fastener washers can be used. If a washer exceeds one inch diameter, it must be a perforated washer to allow mortar embedment. Fasteners will be installed into the nail bands every six inches vertically into framing and every 16 inches on center. When an end lap is required, it must occur over a framing location. Cut back the dimple sheet material 2 to 3 inches to butt dimple sheet and overlap lath. Do not overlap or try to nest the dimple sheet. Apply fasteners at lap joint framing location. An edge lap does not typically require cutting back dimple sheet, since the lath overhangs the sheet on the long edge. Overlap the lath over previously installed course and apply fasteners at framing locations. As you reach the top of an installation, we offer the top side ventilation trim which has bug mesh pre-attached for convenience. Top side ventilation trim is also pre-punched with nail slots for mechanical attachment. With these PVC accessories, it is important to leave gap between the fastener head and PVC part. Always place fasteners in the center of the nail slot. This will allow the part to move when expansion and contraction occur. Inside corners are achieved by running the drain and dry lath material at least 16 inches through the corner, never ending at the corner. A scrap 2x4 is helpful to push the material into the corner while a few initial fasteners are installed to hold position. Outside corners will also require the material to be run through the corner to a framing location. We find it helpful to start at an outside corner, providing the extra 16 inches around the corner and bend or wrap the corner. This enables the installer to force the 90 degree bend to occur between dimples, providing a crisper 90. Depending on the height of the wall and local climate, you may need to install a mid-wall transition capable of weeping and ventilation. In general, ventilation details would be required every other floor. Marine climates require ventilation detail at every floor. Please see installation instructions for climate and height triggers for this detail. This can be achieved by terminating the lower portion, adding the bug mesh, followed by a flashing, and then another bug mesh above this flashing. Then continue the drain and dry lath upper section. When drain and dry lath terminates against a vertical dissimilar material like trim, a soft joint can be created by adding a casing bead 
likely a 5 8 inch ground casing bead or a spacing material. Later, this gap is filled with backer rod and then sealant, or it can be filled with flex and dry tape, which is addressed in another video. When applying mortar as a scratch coat to drain and dry lath, apply and follow the rules as typical lath scratch coat installation. Ensure that the fiberglass lath is fully encapsulated, while ensuring the scratch coat depth is appropriate and uniform. When the mortar is nearly cured, texture the surface with a scarifying stucco comb or notched trowel in a horizontal direction. Allow the scratch coat to cure before beginning your stone or stucco finish. Thank you for watching. Please view the other videos in this series for helpful manufactured stone veneer installation techniques and tips. Learn more about drain and dry lath at www.drainanddrylath.com.